It is the end of the year, and so as such, I thought we'd do kind of a grab bag of classic Lee Remitta Spider-Man stories from this volume, Spider-Man No More, which you can find a copy of in the comments down below if you want to buy it yourself. These epic collections are fantastic because they collect a whole bunch of fun epic stories. The, the one that I want to do the most is a classic Spider-Man, How Green Was My Goblin, which is a story <laughs> that showcases like the formidability of the Green Goblin, AKA Norman Osborn. I mean, uh, he should be pretty formidable. He's Spider-Man's number one villain. And I think this is the story that really like cements that. It's like, this is why Green Goblin is Spider-Man's main villain. So the real title is, How Evergreen Is My Goblin. Oh, I like that. Oh. The funny thing is, when you find out what this story is, you're gonna be like, what? Why is Green Goblin Spider-Man's number one? This is why? What was his comparison? No wonder Venom was so popular 30 years later. Oh. I mean, actually it was more like 20 years later, but even still. I'm still excited to see like what this terrible thing was that happened. Yeah, oh, and it was terrible, let me tell you. And, and it does, it, it, it sets Spider-Man apart from the other pantheon of heroes by showing just how schlubby and normal he is or how hapless he can be in the face of superheroism. You're like, this shit wouldn't happen to Batman. Spider-Man's just on the top of a building one day eating a sandwich, Green Goblin flies by and the wake of the wind knocks it out of his hands and goes, no! <sighs> yeah, that's it. Lee is really leaning heavily into the idea that Spider-Man is just some hapless kid. Right. And he is a loser. <laughs> yeah, he's not like Cap who was like, I want to be a hero. No, or I, I'm, I'm chosen by God and country to be a hero. Right. No, my uncle told me with his dying breath, with great power comes great responsibility, and I have that power. Yeah. And I'll let him down unless I help people. Ironically, Uncle Ben like never says it on camera. Like it's never on panel, Uncle Ben saying, with great power comes great. He dies off panel. And Spider-Man at the end of that story just goes, you know, one time Uncle Ben said this. <laughs> He was talking about hooking up circuit breakers or something. With great power, you have to have great responsibility. Wear rubber gloves and make sure the power is disconnected. <laughs> this story is basically like one of six appearances of the Green Goblin, but this one has one of the most iconic covers. It's the story arc in which Green Goblin discovers that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. What? Yeah. Huh. By the way, I just this is just me being a Spider-Man fan and just shamelessly using the show to talk about Spider-Man, but seeing the original depiction of Green Goblin on his Goblin glider, or as he calls it, his broomstick. What? That's not a broomstick at all. No, it is, I mean, it is vehicleized, but he sees it as a broomstick. Because he's, he's a, a witch? He's not a yes. witch. Do like, it. because he's a goblin and goblins are in some way related to witches, I don't know, the metaphor breaks down. But I love the depiction of it, and I believe that Steve Ditko is the first one to draw Green Goblin, but Romita continues the legacy of it being like just one tube of rocket fuel and like a pair of stirrups. Yeah, how just, how can that so, last? I don't know. It's so dangerous. <laughs> I don't know why, but like, I think it's because over the years we see it reinforced and made into a more like- An actual aerodynamic yeah, thing. Yeah, some kind of vehicle, but like, I love the simplicity of the design, and I love how goddamn dangerous it must be to fly around as the Green Goblin. Well, I mean, that just shows how crazy he is. That's true. And it makes sense that it's a, he calls it his broomstick, because it by all means shouldn't fly. That's <laughs> we don't know it's Norman Osborn yet. We don't? That's how far back we are. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's Amazing Spider-Man number 39, in which Green Goblin is just a pain in the ass, and he's like, you know what? I want to fuck up Spider-Man. Like that's his that's his whole motivation. He's like, screw Spider Man. He's beat me numerous times. What makes him think he can do it again? Here I go. So, as far as the reader knows, Green Goblin just showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, completely. Okay. And he's a criminal. He's a criminal mastermind. I mean, uh, he has a lab. He does have a lab. That's all we know. That's impressive. Yeah, that's true. But even then, like, it's more like a workstation. Like we just see him building his broomstick and setting up his pumpkin bombs, which he doesn't call pumpkin bombs yet. Like, that's how early we are. Does he what, just what? call them bombs? No, he calls them stun bombs. But they're in the shape of pumpkins. 100%. And they kill. Yeah, they don't stun. Peter Parker has a host of problems. He's in college, his Aunt May is on death's door at every turn. Don't He's worry got about that, at least a bevy of babes all trying to ruin his life or hook up with him at any point. And or he's Spider-Man. Yeah. And 
Green Goblin is just like, my central preoccupation is killing Spider-Man and ruining his life. That's my plan. I'm going to find out who Sounds he is. Sounds like she'll become his girlfriend. Yeah, right? <laughs> so he's like, here's my plan. I'm going to find out who he is. I'm going to wreck his life, and then I'm going to kill him. That's my plan. That's like what I'm going to do today. So, Ooh, I also have to pick up my dry cleaning. Shit. I'm going to skip it, because I'm evil. So Spider-Man has a cold. That's his ailment at this point. Okay. okay. And he's like, crap, I think I'm catching a cold. Spoilers, he does. And so... I feel like even a cold shouldn't be that much of a problem for Spider-Man. He, he's got the strength of a spider. That's true. Proportionate. Yeah. Shouldn't his immune system be, like, super boosted? You know, it's funny because, yes, uh, certainly his healing factor kicks in when he is stabbed or blown up, but it doesn't have the same effect on diseases. And that's just a thing that Stan Lee always liked. He liked the idea that Spider-Man could get acne or get sick. There's one story in particular where he gets the flu real bad and it kills his Spider-Man powers. It just knocks them out. <laughs> and so he thinks his spider powers are gone forever, but he's also delirious with the flu. And so he tells his whole crew, delirious with the flu, hey, I've been Spider-Man the whole time and I've been lying to you. I'm sorry, guys. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove it right this second. I can't because they're gone. My powers are gone. Ah, uh, crazy old Parker. That's it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's what would happen. One time he gets sick and he fights Doc Ock, and it's the first time he fights Doc Ock. Doc Ock mops the floor with him and then whips off his mask, and he's just like, my life is over. And they're all like, how gallant of Peter Parker to dress as Spider-Man and try to distract Doc <laughs> Ock from hurting the rest of us. And Doc Ock buys it too, because he's like, that was pathetic, what you did. Like, and yet, a really good job on making the costume. Yeah, no, it's true. I thought it was him. It, listen, yeah. that, that costume is available for retail because Flash Thompson also dons that costume to try and scare Peter Parker and ends up getting kidnapped by Doctor Doom. <laughs> that costume's available on every corner of the drugstore. So basically, Peter Parker should feel really bad. All the time. Because it's like, even when you come clean about being Spider-Man, everyone's like, there's no way you There's no way, you're such a loser, there's no way you're Spider-Man. You're not Spider-Man. 100%. You suck so much. Yeah. That's the only person I would buy is Jameson. No. He's a loser. He was there too. In most of those situations, he's like, oh my God, no. Oh. Yeah. And it's not like hubris gets in the way. Like there's an old 80s John Byrne story in which Lex Luthor builds a Superman identifying machine. And it's like the size of like a Cray in 1978. And he punches in all the information and it comes out and it's Clark Kent and he's like, blast the machine and he breaks the machine. No, no, that, that one you buy. Yeah. You're like, what are his measurements? Right, no, that one, 100%. So Peter goes to meet up with Doc Bromwell. Dr. Bromwell uh, is- Oh, no, that's Dr. Broom, he's the custodian. Lol. Uh, and Dr. also uh, Goblin rides him. Right. <laughs> Dr. Bromwell is just the doctor that Aunt May routinely sees. And this is just like indicative of what it's like to read Spider-Man in every era where like everybody just whips up some characters and goes like, this is part of Peter's cast now. Doc Bromwell's job entirely is just to nursemaid Aunt May and to make Peter feel bad for not being available when Aunt May falls ill and then in like the heat of delirium calls out for Peter. So Doc Bromwell's making Aunt May sick to make money off the insurance. There's no way he isn't. <gasps> He's absolutely like lacing her castor oil with some kind of a, you know, pollutant. I think just castor oil would be enough. That's fair. But Spider-Man Peter Parker goes to Bromwell's but also to get checked out because it's also like it's their doctor. So Bromwell checks him out and walks in. He's a really shitty doctor. You mean that no one's taken blood from him and gone like, there is something weird. Oh, that happens. No, not with Bromwell. Bromwell's not taking his blood. He's just checking his blood pressure. And by the way, when he does, he goes, you have the physiology of a superhero. Good for you, son. That's it. Because I know you're not one because you're such a loser. Yes, <laughs> that's how much of a loser Peter Parker has always been. And shall continue to be. <laughs> so he goes, I'll give you a B12 shot, you'll be fine. He's like, okay. He tries to pierce the skin and <laughs> breaks the needle. No, he's not the fucking Hulk, but yeah. So Peter tries to get out of the way because his spider sense goes off. Right. No. Yeah, I'm sorry, no. I can't control this. <laughs> <laughs> so Bronwell warns him that, like, you know, Aunt May had an operation recently because she's always going through the operations. And uh, for what? Who knows? Don't, while she's recuperating, expose her to any shocks. So, like, don't tell her you're Spider-Man. <laughs> Precisely. Don't die as Spider-Man. I mean, I know you're not because you're Obviously, a loser. look at you. But also, But that like, would be the level of thing you wouldn't want to say to her. Exactly. Something that outlandish. That would probably put her in the grave. And so Peter well, is... At least she'd die laughing. 
So Peter is just like overwhelmed with guilt and he's like, oh my God, like Aunt May, she's this anchor around my neck. He in no way is like, fuck Aunt May, she's ruining my life. He's just like, oh, poor Aunt May. She's like my mother. She took care of me and she he gave up all of her life to take care she, of me. He's the anchor around her neck. Yes. Okay. Yes. He believes that he's the reason why she's so sick and frail and miserable. And that, not that Bromwell secretly keeping like, her down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so by the way, this is, this is college. I love that in college, Peter Parker has a new cast of characters and also his high school bully, Flash Thompson. Like, Flash and Peter went to the same college and Flash is like, hey, PewDiePie Parker, I'm gonna keep dogging you and ruining your life. Don't forget, you're a loser. But even though you're built like a brick shit house and you don't have glasses anymore. Isn't Peter like really smart? Yes. How did Flash get in the same college that he got it's into? Just Football same, scholarship? Yes, that's right, actually. But it's Empire State University. It's just a local state college. Oh. Peter can't afford to go to outside state college. He needs the tuition money. Hmm. Flash Thompson is hanging out with Peter's new friends, which are not really friends. They're all people who hang out with Flash Thompson, and Flash Thompson's like, don't hang out with that guy, he sucks. And those people include Harry Osborn and Gwen Stacy. And so, yeah, that's right. Harry and Gwen are friends of Peter's or colleagues. Or Acquaintances, they're, 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 like. they're, they're classmates of Peter at Empire State University. Harry went to Empire State, isn't he rich? Yes, he is. Norman wouldn't waste the money to send him to one of those Ivy Leagues. Isn't Gwen also pretty smart though? Yes. So why is she there? She's saving her money. That's right. Well, her father's a police captain. I guess just like easier to keep her in town and keep an eye on her. I don't know. Okay. It's just, these are the characters. Okay. If you date anyone here, I can actually arrest them and have justifiable cause. Yeah. Well also Empire State University is a pretty prestigious university in the Marvel universe. Is it? Yeah. Okay. They let Flash Thompson in. He, football scholarship. <laughs> he's, he's the BMOC. Harry's dropped off by Norman and- To college. To college, yeah. For the day. Yeah, well, he's gotta go to class. He doesn't live on campus, he lives in you, an apartment. You're in New York. Yeah, and Norman is wealthy and can afford a very nice car to drive through. Who's driving in New York? But, but doesn't have a driver. No, it's true, Norman's driving it himself. It's 1967, it's a little different. Traffic's a little different back then. All right. But yeah, the brakes are worse. You have hit more people. But Norman's also a complete douche about it. It's very similar to the 2002 Spider-Man movie. Okay. Where he's just like, hey man, like thanks a lot, dad. And he's like, shut up. Like work harder. Don't call me dad. Don't embarrass <laughs> me in front of your friends. Yeah. He's just, it's great. Cause he goes, what's wrong, dad? You haven't said a word to me since we left the house. And he goes, there's nothing wrong. What do you want me to give you a lift or deliver a speech? Look, it's a fortune keeping you in college. Work on your studies. Don't, don't concentrate on what a bad father I am. And he drives away. So Harry's like, damn, my dad hates me. It must be because I suck. So oh, so he internalizes everything. He completely like, internalizes. But not as much as Peter sucks, so I guess that's something. Well, it's great because like, Norman gives Harry a hard time, and so Harry feels bad, and he internalizes it. Aunt May is kind to Peter, but is also a burden, and it makes Peter feel bad. So they're both these two mopey dudes walking through campus. When Peter passes Flash and Gwen Stacy, Gwen is like, listen, we all decided very recently, we took a poll and we're gonna decide to ni be nice to Peter for a little while. That's right, Gwen was a tormentor of Peter's back at college. I like the fact that it's for a little while. Well, we're gonna try it out, it goes. see how it feels. And Peter ignores them. He completely gives them the brush off. Well, and he's in a bad way. He's in a bad way, he's really sad. And also maybe their being friendly is just not being mean. <laughs> we're just not gonna say anything to him. Basically that. That's, that's, that's true. And they're like, screw that, him. That is yes. not being nice. That's right. How dare he ignore us? We are way cooler than he is. Yeah, we're he the... should be thanking us for not giving him a hard time today. By that's the way, true. this can't possibly be Gwen Stacy. She doesn't have a headband on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only way I can recognize her. She actually looks weird without the headband. And it's because otherwise she's just a pretty girl in the pantheon of women that John Reedy draws. So Peter walks by them, he completely ignores them, and like, fuck that guy, what an asshole! He didn't notice that we were not being mean to him! And so they go right back to being a douche, although Gwen states is like, hmm, poor Peter, I wonder he, why he's sad. Maybe one day I'll bang him. Spoilers, you never will. Harry is also walking by, and they're like, hey Harry, we hang out with you and give Peter a hard time, and he ignores them, and they're like, what the fuck's going on? Is something going around? Are we ghosts? <laughs> Are we dead? Punch me! So... <laughs> but wait, if I'm a ghost and I punch you, you might feel it. Yeah, or it'll go right through me. So... Peter sees that Harry is miserable and he's like, hey, I've noticed that Harry isn't giving me a hard time right now. I wonder what his deal is. And so I was like, hey man, what's going on? Like, why are you razzling me? Yeah, and Harry's like, look dude, I don't want to talk about it. And then he goes, hey, you know, actually, thanks for asking. That's really cool of you. 
Like, I love it because Peter goes, why did I ask him that? I don't care. Harry's an asshole to me. And then Harry's like, hey man, fuck off. And then he's like, wait, you know what? Actually, and uncharacteristic goes, you know, Peter, I really appreciate that you asked. I'm having a hard time, but thanks a lot for asking. <laughs> and Peter's like, that was weird. It's almost like the love you take is equal to the love you make. Which is a song back then. So Peter and Harry end up like talking, just like out of nowhere. And this is where they become friends and how they become friends. Oh. Literally, they didn't like each other and they both were, well, Harry was part of the in crowd that gave Peter a hard time and Peter just associated Harry with a bunch of assholes that gave him a hard time. Cause he and was. Then, uncharacteristically, both of them had an abusive experience and then we're like, hey man, how you doing? The other one's like, not bad, thanks a lot. I appreciate you asking. They're like, are we friends right now? Yup. Gwen notices that the two of them are talking. She's like, holy shit, are they friends now? This is weird. What a weird day this is. And then, I didn't wear my headband today. That's probably what's up. That's exactly it. So <laughs> Yeah, all the blood is finally circulating. So Spider-Man swings in action. Like It's later. And he notices that there's a bunch of like very obvious criminals shaking down people on the top of a building. And so Spider-Man swings into action and he kicks their ass and makes a bunch of quips. While he's beating the shit out of them, Green Goblin is watching and he's like, ha ha, I hired those guys to commit a very obvious crime that Spider-Man would notice. And so now what'll happen is I'm going to hit him with some gas. <laughs> From his, his uh, pumpkin bomb? Yeah, yeah, it's like a gas bomb that he throws. Okay. And it dulls Spider-Man's spider sense, which is known to work. How would he know how that works? Spider-Man takes some pictures of what he did, but he's already been hit by the gas, and so he doesn't know that his spider sense has been dull. Plus, he's sick, and that may have also had an effect on making the gas more effective, but he's chalking up any of his disorientation to the illness that he is suffering from. I want to see him web swing just straight into a building after this. But he got the B12 shot. <laughs> that doesn't do anything. <laughs> he has not vitamin C, which actually helps your immune system. Or zinc. So he uh, swings into a convenient alley. He gets his clothes together and he starts undressing. And Green Goblin just wa just follows him to the alley and watches. Goes, yeah, click. This is great. Click. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to use these later. Click. Yeah, he sure is. Going in the bank. Wouldn't it be amazing if Bromwell was all like, I know Brom I know this is not what Bromwell's doing at all. No. But it'd be great if he was like, I don't understand. I keep putting things into the injections I'm giving Peter and nothing is happening. Right, it's, it's not working like his aunt. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to make the Parker sick and make them a, a welfare case for me. Right? No. That's how he pieces together that he's Spider-Man. Yeah. Bromwell isn't looking for to be- I know. But yes. I'm making my own story now. That's true. It's good stuff. That's uh, that to be used in a current storyline. <laughs> so Spider-Man changes into Peter Parker. Green Goblin doesn't recognize him. He's just like, ah, look at that guy. That's what he looks like. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to follow him home and then I'll look up his address and figure out who he is. So are, are we supposed to believe that the Goblin Glider is Makes quiet? no noise. I mean, it would be loud as fuck. It is just a jet engine. <laughs> it is constantly shooting, pillowing smoke. Peter is like, something's going on. I feel weird, but it's not my spider sense. Or maybe it is, I don't know, but like, I'm fine. I'm in an alley, I don't see anything. Maybe I so, should turn around. Never. So he, took, he puts on his regular my clothes. My spider sense isn't telling me to turn around. Why yeah. would I do that? So then he goes to the Daily Bugle and Green Goblin's like, shit, he didn't go home. I, 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 I don't know who works there. So Peter goes in and uh, he basically like offers J. Jonah Jameson some pictures of Spider-Man doing that thing that he just did. Jameson's like, I will pay you in like two to three weeks for these photos that I'm going to publish right now. And Peter's like, fuck you, I'm taking them to the Globe. And Jameson's like, all right, I'll pay you now. Because in two to three weeks, you're gonna be like, I barely made any money off of those. Oh no, he's gonna be like, I'm not gonna pay you. That's Jameson. He's just like, what? Two to three weeks ago? I don't remember that. You get in writing? So Peter gets paid. He remarks that Why like- Why would he ever continue to work there? I think it's just spite. I think he's just like, fuck Jameson. He's looking for a father figure? I mean- He's got a thing for older guys? What's funny is, <laughs> Jameson, in at least three different stories in this volume, is given some shit by Peter, and Jameson immediately heel turns and is like, how dare you treat me like this? I've been like a father to you. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you haven't. I mean, I've been like a, a bad father. Yeah, a really bad father. So uh, Peter takes the money and he's like, this is worth half of what the globe would give me, but I have money and that's enough, which is 100% what a 20-something would do. I don't want to go all the way to the globe. They're right over there. Shit. I'm paid now, though. <laughs> so he leaves. He was talking to Jameson. Green Goblin pulls out a convenient device, which he will do throughout the story, that allows him to listen in on what their conversation was, knows his name is Peter Parker. Peter goes to his house, 
And before he goes in the door, Green Goblin's just so fucking excited. He's just like, Dah! It's me! I know who you are! I'm gonna fucking kill you! <laughs> Peter's like, holy shit! Because nothing has gotten this series. I mean, I will say, you know, we talked about how Doc Hawk like whipped his mask off within their first fight. Right. But no one's gone to his house and been like, I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> So when Peter's like, whoa, 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 not cool, man. Yeah, no, he is like, this is fucked. Like, Peter, and if you're reading this as a Spider-Man fan, you're like, holy shit, like, things got real. That's when Tom Holland goes, all right, Deadly Force activated. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter's like, this is, this is, this is a first for me. Like, some crazy asshole in a costume is at my house, and he's, he's playing for keeps. This is fucked. And he, like, tries to web him and is like, oh, shit, I'm not even dressed like Spider-Man. Like, he's so used to fighting these guys with Spider-Man, he doesn't even remember he's wearing his regular clothes. So, Which includes a sweet yellow vest. Oh, yeah, no, I love that vest. And by love, I mean hate. <laughs> it's just like, maybe you'd be a little more popular if you ditched the vest, my, my man. You just get rid of the vest. Uh, Daddy it's a little chilly and not cold enough for a jacket. Yeah, my arms are fine, my chest needs the help. <laughs> so Aunt May is just... Horrible. I, I I appreciate Aunt May as a supporting character, and she eventually has agency. But in this book, she Green Goblin like hits Spider-Man with like smoke, like a smoke bomb, and Aunt May chalks it up to fog, and she's just <laughs> like, "Oh, I hear some commotion outside, but it must be the fog. I hope nothing shocks me into a coma." Yeah, it must be the fog that's yelling and fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, you know, Peter is. He's, he's fighting Green Goblin in his civilian clothes, so his regular clothes are kind of opening up. You're seeing his Spider-Man costume. And this is like one of the first most intensive fights of Spider-Man's career at this point. And, you and know, he has no spider sense. No, that's true. Or at least it's dulled. Like he know, and plus he has eyes. He's like, oh shit, that's coming to me. You know, Gr Green Goblin pulls out some like, essentially like prototype razor bats. They're not called razor bats this time, but you know, he's just whipping them at him anyway. And Spider-Man's like, okay. I have to fight this guy like he's going to kill me. So he just throws everything he has at Green Goblin and Green Goblin just blasts him, hits him with more smoke. This guy just is nothing but smoke. He's just throwing fucking nonstop. Smoke bombs, smoke pellets, pumpkin bombs, razor, just everything at him. And eventually just hits him, knocks him down, wraps him up in steel cable, and then just drags his ass through the sky on the back of his motorized broomstick. So we don't shock Aunt May? No, we don't, thankfully. No, it's enough. We, we the, set it up like... The, the tension is that Peter must, like, fight Green Goblin quietly or get him off the lawn. Like, that's the tension of the scene. Is like, he knows who I am. I can't fight him all out because otherwise Aunt May will hear. You know, I gotta get this shit done. It's like, so I gotta beat my greatest nemesis fast, quiet, and subtly, which or, doesn't work out. Or be taken by him. Right, which he doesn't allow himself to be, although it just happens. It just happens, and we get I, like basically the scene of the of, of of the cover. I like giving Aunt May a little bit more authority, mm -hmm. so that later on she'd be like, "I grew up in New York." Right. Why would this shock me? Oh no, I'm mugging outside. A really, really loud, aggressive one with like costumes and explosions. <laughs> so Green Goblin ties up Peter Parker in his lair, and he's like, "Ha ha!" And Peter Parker for the next two issues is going to be like. These steel cables around my wrists are really tight and really strong. I have to keep him talking long enough to free myself. That's the whole next issue. What Peter's great like, steel cables that are painted like rope. Yeah. It's like you want to make it out? No, he, he doesn't get that desperate. <laughs> so Green Goblin is like, ha ha, I've got you, and now I'm going to fucking kill you. And Peter's like, okay, this is intense. I have to keep him talking. And so he's like, ah, like, fuck you, Green Goblin. So Green Goblin's like, you know what? I know who you are, but you don't know who I am. And since I'm going to kill you anyway, I guess I'll tell you, I'm Norman Osborn. And he's like, holy shit, Norman Osborn, the father of that guy I know, kind of? Because that's the tension of this book. It's like, back then, he only just maybe sort of became acquaintances with Harry. Yeah. Mm. They barely are friends. They're barely friends. Not even. I wouldn't even go so far as to say they're friends. He is an antagonist up until they both were kind of nice to each other for about what? The equivalent of four and five minutes? Yeah. So he's like, holy shit, you're Norman Osborn. And that's the first time the reader's like, holy shit, that's Norman Osborn. Are you kidding me? And so Norman Osborn just, he's just like wallowing in his own crapulence. He's just like, whoa, I'm great. I fucking beat you, you piece of shit. And so his eyes he's are like, crazy. He's like, well, excuse are. me, why do you hate me? Because you beat me multiple times. I am the Green Goblin. That's it. It's just, I'm Green Goblin. When I became Green Goblin, I declared myself the master of crime, but then you keep beating me. 
I mean, you could still be the master of crime. Well, but like you're not. No, I can't be. There's already a kingpin of crime. <laughs> so Peter is like, okay, he is obviously like off his rocker. Look at his eyes and look at his ranting. Which and The ones? fact that he's dressed like a goddamn goblin. His the, real ones. He's not. Yeah, not the ones that are holding here. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, those are those, those are just holes. <gasps> so he mentions. He's like, well, great, like. I'm going, now that I know who you are, I'm gonna beat you and then you're gonna look like an asshole in the news and what's your, what's your effete son gonna do? And he's like, don't talk about Harry. I love Harry, even though I treat him like shit all the time. And Harry makes a point of saying like, Jesus Christ, dad, like you're such an asshole. You didn't used to be an asshole, but like very recently you started being more of an asshole to me, which is also flying in the face of like the history of the book, which is to say that like, Norman was always an abusive father who was always negligent and mean to Harry. As it turns out, he was actually, he was actually like a, a, a halfway decent single father because his mother died, because Harry's mother's died. Because mm -hmm. uh, Harry's mother died and like left him alone. And so like Norman did the best he could, but he was also like a businessman and negligent. Yeah, he and he wasn't it's the 60s. always there. And he wasn't, and he tried to like buy his son's affection, but not in like a, it, it was kind of like in a, I feel bad because I kept like giving you off to other people or sending you to school but I do love you. So we find out that uh, Dr. Strom, who was a business partner slash fellow scientist with Norman Osborn developed this formula. Strom says that he borrowed money from Norman's account that he was gonna pay back later and Norman didn't buy it for a second and immediately called the cops and Strom gets taken away. So while- Which is the right action. I mean, you know. So Strom's gone and Norman's looking through his shit and he finds this like notes. And he finds these notes about a formula. And so he's like, well, I'm a scientist. I'm something of a scientist myself. So he looks yeah. into the formula and he makes the goblin formula. Okay. And it's all stolen from Strom. And when he mixes the components together, they explode and they blow his mind. And when I say that, I mean, <laughs> he is, he literally has brain damage according to the doctors that operate on him after so, Harry discovers his body in the lab. So he doesn't drink it like I thought he did. Nope. Nor does he inject no, it. It explodes uh, yeah, thought, in his face. I thought it was an injected thing as well. I know. It's not. It's just a big explosion. And they're like, holy crap. And it rattled something loose. Yeah, they're like, the damage in his brain is extensive. So did the goblin formula actually do anything or is it just the brain damage? Right? I well, mean, inevitably, Norman is going to keep fucking with the goblin formula and that will make him more insane and stronger and have a healing factor and so forth. Right now, he's just strong and crazy. But he's crazy mostly from the brain damage he suffered from the explosion. But he's strong from the formula. Seemingly. Maybe. I assume so only because he's able to carry Spider-Man so in say. the air using steel cables and also get punched by Spider-Man and not die. But I mean, oh, they all could, so whatever. So that's when we find out that's the turn. Mm -hmm. That's when Norman was a lot more vacant and un, like, sympathetic and mean to Harry and so forth. He was just so- And he found his real face. He doesn't even do that. He's just like, oh man, like the, the, the explosion slash whatever, like the chemicals in the, in the explosion, the, the brain damage, whatever it is, it made him smarter. He's like, I'm smarter now. And because I'm so smart, I should become an awesome costume criminal. That's what I should do with my, with my new talents. So he makes a goblin costume and becomes the Green Goblin. That's it. So Aunt May is just like having a time of it. She's like, oh, Peter didn't call. He's been gone for two and a half hours. So Aunt Anna, the Anna Watson, obviously Mary Jane's aunt, comes across the street. Mary Jane has only been either alluded to by name or occasionally shown with like convenient plants in her face. We haven't seen Mary Jane yet. Uh, but uh, Aunt Anna comes by. She's just car constantly carrying like house plants into the house. She's got a fern. So well, Anna Watson's over there, and she's like, "He's at a, he's he's like a grown boy. Like leave him alone. Like I'm sure he's fine." And she's like, "Where is he?" And so he's like, "Well, maybe he's at like the bugle. He works for the bugle. We should call James." And she goes, "You call? I'm too nervous." That's how much of a wilting willow Aunt May is. Anna should just be like, "Maybe he's dead." <laughs> No, this isn't, the, this isn't the 90s animated series Aunt Anna, who is just a battle axe. Who hates everybody. Who hates everybody and is voiced by Gene Roddenberry's wife, AKA Loxana Troy. Wow. I know. So Anna calls J. Jonah Jameson and he's like, what, Parker? I don't know where he is. What's wrong with you? Click. And then he yells at his, 
He yells at his uh, secretary, he goes, take a note! I want to do an editorial about how useless and unreliable young people are, and for good measure, I'm also going to tear down the elderly, because fuck them too. Because one of them called me, and they gave me a hard time, and so if I'm going to attack the young, I might as well be an equal opportunity piece of shit. How did he become in charge of anything? Uh, he that bought, attitude. He bought the bugle. Oh, he bought the bugle? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it was a rag before, and it's a rag now. Jameson actually classed up the bugle. The bugle used to be a, a shitty rag, and he made it like have integrity. Unless it comes to Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. So Green Goblin is like, all right, well, I'm done talking about Harry and stuff like that. I built this other machine. And this oh, machine, Jesus. when I put it on my it's head. It's always a machine. Yes, this machine is going to project my thoughts visually so we can do flashbacks to every other adventure you and I have had so I can show you how all those times you beat me were actually me beating you. And they do depict his true memories, and so it's all pretty much up to the eye of the beholder, but really it's when he was defeated. That's not how I want to remember it. Okay. And Spider-Man's like, that's great. That You know what, actually that works out great because I still need to free myself from these cables. Oh man, I've almost got an arm free. And you're like, Jesus, how long does it take for you to free yourself from these fucking cables? And then, every time that he thinks I should free myself from those cables, Green Goblin goes, don't think I don't notice you trying to free yourself from those cables. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? So then finally he goes, you know what? You can might as well just free yourself from those cables because I'm ready to fight you now. And then he does. So yeah, this guy is crazy. So Peter frees himself from the cables, smashes Green Goblin's thought machine. Which would have been great to see people's dreams. I know. Would have made a mint. The next time we're gonna see it is in Batman Forever when the Riddler invents it. So Green Goblin's like, put on your Spider-Man costume because I'm not gonna beat some stupid lame teenager. I wanna beat Spider-Man. So he's like, okie dokie. So he puts on his Spider-Man costume and they have an, a knockdown drag out fight that involves webs and pumpkin bombs. And I love that every time Spider-Man uses his webs, some villain goes, ah, oh, damn, I forgot about your webs. They're so awesome. <laughs> so uh, they you fight. You suck, but your webs, they're pretty cool. Yes. Whoever built them is amazing. But it's a really fun fight because like most of the fights are just like very one-sided. It, it is certainly the fodder for why people think Spider-Man is such a powerhouse and such a badass. Like every time that Spider-Man's fighting regular hoods or criminals, there's like seven of them. He just throws his body into the middle of them and just like fists and elbows and defeats all of them. It takes six or seven pages, but he still does it. And in this case, he's fighting Green Goblin. Green Goblin's like, today on my checklist, it's kill you. That's all I have to do today. And so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm crazy enough to do it. I like the idea that Norman's very goal oriented. There's a sequence that I really like, and I don't know why, it's just like Spider-Man like rips the, f like there's a chair bolted to the floor and Green Goblin's just zapping shit from his fingertips and Spider-Man just, just rips the chair out of the ground. Timmy, he's a witch, remember? Excuse me, hold on, he's zapping things from his fingertips? Yeah, no, he has like laser finger gloves as well. Like he's got, he's got, Weapons up the yin yang. Remember, he's a weapons manufacturer, or at least he will be later. Like, right now, he's just a businessman. So, yeah, he just he just rips this huge chair, which God knows what the purpose was in this crazy lair that has mind projection technology. Uh, that's my resting chair. Right. It's very comfortable, and I sit in it when I'm tired. Why is it bolted to the floor? Because I sometimes have night terrors. <laughs> <laughs> so he rips it out of the ground. But I love Spider-Man just desperately like ripping, grabbing anything he can, and just deflecting these laser fingertip weapons. He shoots him with fingertip lasers. He throws razor bats at him and then pulls down this big cannon. He's just like, I'll get my goblin cannon then. And it's like, fuck man, like, <laughs> pick a lane. Excuse me, what? Yeah, my fully automated goblin cannon. And it'll hit you with a blast ray. And okay, then hold on. So he's got the pumpkin bombs, which aren't called pumpkin bombs yet, no. but they're themed like pumpkins. Yes. He's got the bat ray, the, yeah. the bat things. Which, yes, which he doesn't call bl razor, they're, they're but, razor but bats. They're, but they're themed like bats. Yes. You got the finger laser, which I guess is the magic thing. Yeah, it's like magic. The cannon's actually called a goblin cannon. But it looks nothing like that. It actually looks like a light from an amateur theater production. So he blasts that at Spider-Man. Spider-Man turns himself into a human, human cannonball and just hits him in the face with his own body. What? Kicks him in the face and he lands into like, he knocks into chemicals and electricity. Like, oh no, he's gonna turn him into a flash! He causes an explosion, it knocks Goblin on his ass. Earlier, Spider-Man knocks Goblin down and then Spider-Man goes to check on him and he's like, ah, I'm actually awake, blah. So, Gobby is concussed and he's like, oh shit, he's probably playing possum. I don't know if I should help him out. And he gets like really close to him and he's like, oh okay, no, he's really fucked up actually. 
So he checks his pulse and he's like, whoo, because the whole thing, throughout the fight. Oh, he's dead, okay. He's not, because he's like, <laughs> he keeps thinking like, even if I beat him, which I probably will, because the book's called Spider-Man, he knows who I am and he'll ruin my life. So like, I have to kill him. But I'm not going to, like, I'm not a murderer. But I don't have to save him. <laughs> From no, this fire. He's not bad. That I'm setting. No, he's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, and tossing gasoline on him. Oh, it's not my problem if the yeah. gasoline lights on fire. I just love how he's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, this guy knows who I am, and I'm not gonna kill him. Killing him is off the table, so what do I do about this? Bring and him so, to the cops? But he'll tell the cops who I am, and then I'm arrested because the cops also think Spider Man's public enemy number one, thanks to J. Jonah Jameson's smear campaign. So. The cops aren't gonna believe that. <laughs> this puny kid, Spider Man? Yeah, nobody believes yeah. it. Every time that anybody's faced with that. That, that probability, they're like, nope. So he checks his pulse, he's not dead. And when he pulls off his mask, reveals he's Norman, he, Norman comes to and he's like, wait. And Norman asks Spider-Man about a thing in the flashbacks that dates back to before he got goblin-ified. So Spider-Man's like, holy shit, he has amnesia that has reset him to the point before he was ever a goblin. He's like, why am I wearing this? Yes. So Spider-Man like takes off his clothes. Uh, it's Halloween. Yeah, Halloween week. Yeah. So he throws the, the the goblin costume in the fire. The fire department's outside. They're like, we're coming in. He's like, no, 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 wait. I'm a decent. Yeah. So he throws goblin's gos costume into the fire. Which means it's definitely not scale mail. No, it's not because it burns up. He's like, no, it's done. And uh, Norman thankfully was wearing his full business suit underneath the goblin costume. And then well, Spider-Man always have uh, a backup. Excuse That's me. Right. No. I know, right? He's got, a he's got a full tied tie. Yeah. It's gonna be sweaty and wrinkly, but, but I'm always ready for a business call. There's literally no way. He's got business shoes. That those there. pants are under those very tight leggings no, that it's he's true. wearing. No, those aren't really his muscles. Those are just, that's a that's a bodysuit. Yeah, it's so, padding. Yeah, exactly. It makes not, me look he, intimidating. He's not that ripped. <laughs> so Spider-Man leads Norman to the fire department, and there, and it's great because in every turn, any if there is a character on the page who sees Spider-Man and says that he's a hero, there must also be another person to say, I don't know about that. Jameson's editorials are really convincing. So the fire department's like, holy shit, Spider-Man, I didn't know you were a hero, way to go. And then the other guy's like, oh, who knows? Maybe he started this fire. So Spider-Man delivers Norman to the fire department and they're like, what happened? And he's like, Norman Osborn's a hero. He helped me defeat the Green Goblin. And they're like, does that mean that you two murdered a man? And Spider-Man's like, I gotta go. <laughs> so he <laughs> swings away and then he goes, uh, to, uh, to to the house and he runs into Dr. Bromwell, who's like, hey, how come you weren't here? What's your problem? And Peter's like, man, I suck. What? And then Bromwell leaves, Aunt May wakes up. That's when Peter just grabs Bromwell by the back and the trouser just literally Tosses throws him, him out the yeah. window. Yeah. Yeah. So Aunt May's like, Aunt May basically is like, oh, you're very warm. And he's like, I'm warm from the fire that I was just in, but I can't tell her that. Yeah, I'm sick, Aunt May. And then Aunt May immediately delivers, like, forces him to go to bed and she feeds him chicken soup and he's like huh and then to parallel the two of them peter's in bed being nursemaided by aunt may norman's in bed being nursemaided by uh harry osborne is harry being like yeah this is exactly where i want my dad <laughs> drink the poison i mean chicken soup family business yeah no does he remember who like when he gets is? when he gets it back, he immediately remembers who Spider-Man is and everything associated with it, which is why he will continuously get amnesia until he dies. <laughs> That's an understandable reason why Gob Green Goblin is his worst enemy. Oh yeah, he followed him home. No, yeah, no, it's true. He brought it home with him. He's like, no, you, 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 you brought work home with you. Fuck you. You, you crossed the line. That's right. Now Green Goblin shows that he is his most formidable because also Spider-Man like fights for his life, which is not normal for Spider-Man. Mm. Normally it's just like, oh, in every panel where he is Spider-Man fighting anybody, he is quipping the shit out of those scenes. He's chewing the scenery, making hilarious jokes. And by hilarious, I mean like, they're groaners in 1967. Aww. So he's beating the living shit out of like seven or eight people. He literally picks up a door and takes out four people. So- uh, I mean, those guys are dead. Oh yeah. Well, they maybe went, the door's one of those like flimsy doors, like the one I had when door. I was a kid. Yeah, it's like from Home Depot or something. Yeah. But, uh, he defeats these villains who are stealing payroll, and the secretary is like, yay, Spider-Man, you saved the payroll, and maybe even our lives. And the other guy's like, whoa, Daily Bugle says he sucks. Don't get too chummy with him. And he's like, thanks remember, a lot. Remember, you're my girl, <laughs> or you will be. So Spider-Man leaves, and he's like, fuck that, man. You, nobody gets this shit. Everybody thinks Daredevil's so cool. What? <laughs> what about me? 
That's just Stan promoting Daredevil. Oh, okay. that works. Because Daredevil hey, was a big deal. If you think Spider-Man's cool, then you're gonna think Daredevil's even cooler because Spider-Man thinks he's cool. Uh, I noticed Peter Parker's riding around on a sweet motorcycle. He is, and that's actually advertised in one of the other previous issues in which they're like, Spider-Man makes the greatest or the coolest purchase of his life. And it's a moped. <laughs> oh, so at this point, Peter and Harry are living together in their own apartment. Oh. What? It's They're... been 11 issues. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Listen, they, they are fast at making friends. They, it's, it is genuinely just like, you are a person I know who I could live with because I don't want to live with Flash. And I think at this point, Flash is already enlisted in the army. So he is fighting overseas. Norman's version of it is, or not Norman, Harry's version of it is, hey, do you think you're a piece of shit? I think I'm a piece of shit. Let's, let's get, get a, pieces of shit together. Yeah, let's live together. All right. My, I, I, I can't fear competition from you because we have <laughs> rock bottom self-esteem. Right. And Peter says, sure, I have no problem running into your dad all the time. Yeah. He goes to his apartment and Harry's like, Literally, he opens the door and Harry's in his face and goes like, your Aunt May had a problem, you gotta go! And he's like, ah, oh, shit. So he gets on the moped and he goes home and Aunt May had a friggin' Three hours later. She, she, she had, a, she had a, a collapse. And what's great is, this is the second time in 11 <laughs> issues that Dr. Bromwell is on the case and offers to or implements a sedative. He's constantly pushing these sedatives on Aunt May. And it's like, yeah, no, he is definitely- He's like- Just, just- <laughs> Fucking up this old broad. Yeah, oh, this he, is an old technique is, I know. It's uh, called a face massage with a pillow. He is scamming that insurance company. Right? Like, Jesus. There's no way the Parkers have insurance. I mean, maybe from Uncle Ben's life insurance, but like, that's gotta be dried up by now. They live in a house in Forest Hills. So, okay. This is the best sweater I've ever seen anyone wear. It's gotta be yellow. Oh, no, his, yes, his sweater, which is just scribbles. <laughs> yes. Well, it's emulating, you know, the, the fabric. It looks like he has, he made a sweater out of hairy Italian men chests. <laughs> Accurate and ew. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so Peter leaves. Anna Watson's like, listen, I'm going to like keep an eye on her. I'll call you, but stay by your phone. He's like, okay. So he goes home. He goes to a class. He's like, he, he goes home. He's like, I, I know I have an exam tomorrow, but I can't study for it because I'm too upset about Aunt May. Then he goes to, the ex he goes to school, takes the exam, fails, and then Professor Warren, that's right, Miles hey. Warren, who will eventually get whiter hair and be more distinct, uh, is gonna be and like- a lot creepier. Yeah, a lot creepier. <laughs> gonna, oh. He's gonna dial that creep factor. Oh yeah, to 11. Yeah, I'm starting the creep now. Right, so he's like, hey Parker, listen, like your grades are falling apart and you got here based on like your academic prowess and your like aptitude for science, but don't think you can just like rely on that shit. You gotta like work. And he's like, I'm sorry. Also, if you ever wear that, Sweater to this class again. It's just so, so distracting. I couldn't out. do anything. So uh, I got off this guy named Craven. I literally got it off, off his him. skin. <laughs> so uh, Gwen Stacy gets the hairband at this point. Is like, hey, I'm having to get together at my house tonight. You want to hang out? And he's like, I have been waiting for Gwen to ask to to show me any interest for months, and I have to say no because I have to be by the phone in case Aunt May calls. So he goes home. <laughs> And he turns on the TV. He's like, maybe the TV will calm my nerves. And it's James Jenner Jameson on a local news program talking about how much Spider-Man sucks. And he only gets the one channel. And it's great because Spider-Man, he doesn't change the channel. He's like, fuck it, I'm a, I'm a glutton for punishment. And Jameson's like, Spider-Man sucks so much. How much does he suck? I'll give you $1,000 if you take his mask off and murder him. What? Whoever. Wow. And, that he's, is... and, and he's like, holy shit. I, honestly, I got to be honest with you. It's been 50 issues. I always kind of thought that J. Jonah Jameson was like a blowhard. I didn't know he like hated me like that. Like I thought he was just kind of like, you know, trumping it up for the, you know, for the ratings. But like, he really wants me dead. What is, an asshole. Isn't that illegal? Apparently not. So he's like, holy shit. Wait, what if it is illegal? And he'll be like, well, now I don't have to pay anybody. Right. Oh no, I'm sorry. The law got involved. Yeah, I want to pay you. I want to pay you, but uh, you're arrested. So, murder. <laughs> so this is it. This is the this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. I can't bang Gwen. My Aunt May is a pain in my ass, and it's because I've been Spider-Man. And J. Jonah Jameson will never let up. And it's it's more that like he's like J. Jonah Jameson. He believes I am a problem. Like it's not that he like says that I suck. Right. He really thinks it. And I am wearing the itchiest sweater known to man. That's I right. can't. I can't do this anymore. I have super skin. Do you know how much I feel this? That's true. Yeah. This, this sweater is like attached to me. 
So he goes for like a one. He he goes for a walk through the city, and he just like wanders through the alleys, and he's just like, yeah, fuck this. So he takes a Spider-Man costume and just dumps it in the garbage. Isn't along he with wearing his, it? That is my question exactly. Wouldn't he have to strip naked? naked yes. And then throw it in the garbage? Yeah, that's what he does. Just in an alley. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's a, a amnesiac <laughs> Norman, Norman Osborn on a broomstick just going, I don't know why I like this, but I do. Something's awakened in me. <laughs> Well, there's the iconic panel that Ramita uh, displays in which Spider-Man's costume is thrown in the garbage and he walks away. Uh, he, he also remarks that like being Spider-Man is kind of like a, a, a child's fantasy and maybe I should grow up and mature and this is, you know, this, this is probably for the best anyway. Yeah, it's not like there's any other heroes for me to look at. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Captain America isn't like a lot more garish looking than I am and doing it all the time, but right. whatever. Or like I could talk to you about this. Doesn't no. a bum like take it out of the garbage and like put it on or something? That's in the movie. Incidentally, the reason why he go, doesn't call flip, 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 flip. the reason why he doesn't call Captain America is because in Amazing Spider-Man Annual number three, the Avengers are like, we kind of suck. What if we invited Spider-Man on the team? He's young and hip looking. Yes, and Hawkeye's like, yeah, he seems kind of fun. And then later, immediately, he's like, fuck him. And Wasp is like, no, he's a spider, and spiders are icky. So the Avengers try to like, you're a wasp, the literal worst. Yeah, you're bug not even ever. a bee. Though they suck. Wait. You thought it was because I was naming myself after the insect? That's worse! Yeah. So the Avengers like- I am who I am! So the yeah. Avengers like down Daredevil because Daredevil's less persona non grata than Spider-Man. And they're like- I don't understand how that could be. He's a devil. I know. And they're like, hey, do you know Spider-Man? He's like, kinda. And they're like, is he cool? He's like, yeah. And they're like, cool, that, 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 that sums it up for me. So they like they invite Spider-Man to hang out with them. Wait, is Daredevil on the Avengers? He is not. He's just- he's just <laughs> So wondering. they literally stop me like, hey, do you know Spider-Man? You know Spider <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Is he cool? Sure. Cool. Maybe we'll ask him to be an Avenger. What about, what me? about me? There's uh, the door. Get out. <laughs> hey, you're part of this is over. You can leave now. Yeah, you can go anytime. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no. Like, Thor goes, hey, Spider-Man, come on, join. He's like, get the fuck out of here. You're kidding me, right? And he's like, no, for real. Barely. And, yeah. And Spider-Man's like, no, fuck that. And he goes home, and Aunt May's like, I'm, I'm swamped with bills. And he's like... Uh, so he goes to the Avengers and he's like, okay, like, I guess I'll join. And they're like, wait a minute. There's not enough of us who are in on you joining. So we need you to pass an initiation test. And he's like, fuck you. And the initiation test is catch the Hulk and bring him to us. Now they know it's because like Hulk used to be an Avenger. Right now he's a rampager and he's kind of like, I just want to be left alone. But he was a founding member of the Avengers. They know who he is and they want to help him out. And they, they really just want to get him and then help him. But Spider-Man doesn't know that and they don't tell him that. Spider-Man tracks down the Hulk. He fights the Hulk. He realizes the Hulk is a mindless monster. And is like, why do the Avengers want him so bad? Fuck them. Like they probably want to like put him away or something. And this poor guy's just like, he's he's like as the mind of a child. So he goes back to the Avengers and he's like, couldn't find him, guess I'm not up to snuff, eat shit and leaves. Oh, okay. I guess that's why he's not gonna call Cap. That's why he's not gonna call Cap. So, uh, hey, Cap, it's me, Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm the guy that told you to eat shit and get fucked. Yeah, that's right. You flipped me off on your way out. I know. I'm me specifically. Sorry about that. Um, Question for you. Make it quick. Could you help me out of a slump? No. What? A s Hello? <laughs> so Jameson is having his usual crappy day, and then a child bursts into the Daily Bugle and runs into Jameson's office. Hey, idea for an editorial. Children suck, and here's why. That's every editorial by Jameson. It's just like Spider-Man sucks or children suck. One or the other. So the child runs in his office and James is like, what is a child doing in my office? And the kid's like, I found this in the garbage. And James is like, oh, it's Spider-Man's costume. shove. He, he goes, this deserves a reward. Miss Brandt, give this child a free copy of the Daily Bugle on his way out. Oh my God. And the kid's I like. I thought he'd be like, get him an ice cream. No, give him one of our newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> the early edition. So I can write that off. That's a nickel. That's right. So, Have they ever done a story in which Jameson is visited by three ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't remember there being a Christmas Carol for Jameson, but if there ever was, he'd be the one that would make the, the ghosts question their vocation. Yep. <laughs> so Jameson is like, this is awesome. So like, stop the presses. This is the new headline. 
and Jameson just runs with it. He's got Spider-Man's costume. Spider-Man's either dead or hurt or he quit How or does he whatever. know it's the Spider-Man's costume? Because, because I have it. Isn't this before... Wait, is this before or after, like, the costume is available in, like, any costume shop like Flash gets? No, it's after, but also it's Spider-Man's costume, though, for real. I can smell I can smell the spider on him. <laughs> I don't it know. It smells like menace. <laughs> there we go. He's Jam- like, no, I smelled this before. This is the real Spider-Man. Right. Yeah, he wears Old Spice. So he, like, just runs with it, and it tears through the city like you wouldn't believe. Like, we're seeing, like, everybody is reacting to Spider-Man no more. And people are like, man, and it's great because we get a really good cross section of New Yorkers where they're like, maybe it's a gag, maybe he made it up. I mean, he found it in a trash can, it doesn't make any sense, or maybe Spider-Man's dead, or, you know what, Jameson, maybe, maybe he's full of shit. Maybe he reverted back into a spider and got squished. And they're like, what? And this is all that was left behind. So Jameson's doing like talk show appearances where he like pulls the costume out and shows people like, Spider-Man quit, it's because of me, I'm the best. And they're having like, they're, they're having, like debates on television yep. about Spider-Man and whether like Spider-Man quitting is a problem or not. Right, people are being mugged in alleyways and like Jameson's like, I'm great. Oh, it, it gets worse. It he gets... wears it to bed like PJs. The, the you whole... know he does. Right. Well, in Spider-Man 2, which is of course an adaptation of the Spider-Man No More storyline, which uses a lot of moments from this, there's a deleted scene in which J.K. Simmons wears the Spider-Man costume and pretends to be Spider-Man on his desk and everyone's like watching him and being like, holy shit. He lost it. What's funny is in the original script, it calls for it to be like, it, it's form fitting. So it's supposed to be like, you know, he's fat. And it's like embarrassing, but JK Simmons is in really good shape. So it fit perfectly. <laughs> but it still works because it's Jameson's head and he's got the cigar in his mouth. It's like, pew, pew, pew. It's a fantastic scene. It's worth the price of admission of nothing. So well, that Jameson just wants to be Spider-Man. Yes. Well, I mean, like, they all do. There's there's actually a story by Stan and Steve in which Jameson straight up monologues about how he hates Spider-Man because Spider-Man represents the hero that Jameson desperately wants to but knows in his heart he never could be. Because he's a grump. So it's he's all like, projection. I'm a shitty person. That means everyone else is a shitty person. If you're a hero, that's that bullshit. Means you're it's a lie. Worst. Yeah, there's that, no way. Except for Captain America. God bless him. Yeah. Actually, back then, he was like, fuck Captain America. He's wearing a mask, too. Seriously, that is so penetratingly insightful and so true to life. I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, yeah, that's true. That's, that, that, that's right. So... <laughs> Jameson like commissions a glass trophy case in his office where they keep <laughs> like he's the suit, like, like a Robin suit in a, in the Batcave. Yes, it's padlocked. He's like, how many others can I collect? Yeah, man, uh, Daredevil sucks. <laughs> That'd be amazing. He's like, I do, I know, I know. No, he's like, uh, we don't know how desperate Jameson is for ratings because right now all he's doing is just milking the Spider-Man No More angle. But Peter stops by his office because like. He's done being Spider-Man. And he sees the costume. He's like, holy shit. Where'd he get that fucking thing? God damn it. I better stop looking at it. He's going to start questioning things. And Jim's like, what do you want? And he's like, oh, I quit. I'm not taking this picture of Spider-Man anymore. I got to go. Like, I'm going to be a, a, a full-time student and take yeah, care of my like, aunt. Yeah, no shit. No, you're not taking pictures of Spider-Man anymore? Well, like, I'm not taking any more pictures. And right. Jameson admits, like, you were my best photographer. How dare you? No. Oh, like, fuck you. Actually, you're a piece of shit. Go away. And you're like, oh. I was your best photographer because I was the only one that could get pictures of Spider-Man. That's no, true. That's an awe. That's not an awe moment for Jameson. It is because, like, you know, he's just... Because this, this miserable bastard has no other language than rage. Rage is his love language. That's right. Tiffany, he drops his cigar out of his mouth. That's how upset he is. It's true. I didn't see that. I've been betrayed. Oh. Stabbed in the back. So then what begins is a turf war between the kingpin of crime... Turf war! (laughs) And the big man. The big man? The big man. Isn't the kingpin the big man? No, ironically, he is not. I mean, he's a big 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 man. man. He's not the big man. That's where the turf war begins. He's like, excuse me. How dare you call yourself (laughs) the big man? Oh, no one's bigger than me! And they get stomped by some huge freaking guy. (laughs) So... The whole book is basically about how Jameson telling New York there is no more Spider-Man emboldens all criminals to go ham on the city. And Kingpin's like, you know what? I'm taking it all. 
right. And so he organizes all of the crime in New York and Foswell's like, holy shit, I'm gonna be the big man again. I'm coming out of retirement. I'm gonna take a piece of this because there's too much crime going on and crime goes up like 50% and it's a disaster. Aren't there other heroes in New There York? are and Spider-Man is more powerful and faster and more like self-loathing enough to be active. <laughs> like Daredevil's gotta be a lawyer at least some of the time. Yeah. Peter's a kid, he's a student. He can, he can blow off classes. I love the fact that all the other superheroes are probably just like, shit. We need Spider-Man back. Yes, like <laughs> the Avengers, like I'll be damned if I'm actually gonna start like catching purse snatchers and armored car muggers. Yeah, Forget see, it. We don't fight crime, okay? Yeah, we fight like Kang. <laughs> like, do you have an esoteric issue where like a character from the Egyptian times is going to like rule all of the future because he put little pins said I was here all over time? No, someone's gonna stab me. <sighs> That's really below my pay grade. So maybe we can get Hawkeye to help you. Maybe. So <laughs> Peter's having a ball. He doesn't even notice that the, the, the crime is bad. He's just like, fuck it. So he sees Gwen, he's like, Gwen, want to lift on my sweet moped? And she's like, I am in. Also, I got a letter from Flash. They read the letter, Flash is nice. They're like, oh, look at Flash. They ride- Does the letter say, dear fuck friends, Peter no, dear friends, uh, I am in mourning over the loss of Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. The fan club is over. <laughs> I don't think Flash got the news yet. It hasn't reached uh, Saigon. Oh, he's in Nam? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real bad. I mean, at this point, don't worry, it's a sliding scale. So he'll lose his legs in Iraq. <laughs> That's what happens. So Pete and Gwen ride this moped and have a full on conversation, which is impossible because it's a, it's a moped from 67. Uh, It'll be loud as fuck. That moped, as that moped is built with the same technology as- The broomstick. The, yes. It's also going 10 miles an hour. Yes, that's true. So it's fine. He asks about like a party she was at and she was like, it's pretty lame without you. And he's like, huh, that's so cute. I almost wish you meant it. And she's thinking, you goofball, I do mean it. I like you. I'm telling you I like Flash because I want you to get jealous, you freaking idiot. Why aren't you getting the signals? So then what? Peter drops her off <laughs> and he goes to Aunt May's house and Aunt Anne is there and Mary Jane's there because he's already met her. It's already been the jackpot. And she's like, oh, and Peter immediately is like, Aunt May, are you okay? How you doing? And Mary Jane goes, boy, I must be losing my touch because a boy entered the room and they didn't pay attention to me. And he's like, oh, Mary Jane, I didn't see you there. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm fucking saying, you dipshit. You want to give me a ride on your moped? And he's like, no. <laughs> So he leaves. <laughs> this is hilarious. Peter Parker, world world class idiot. He is a he is a douchebag. I mean, Peter Parker, if he wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider, would be a world class knob. End of sentence. Period. So <laughs> Peter's listening to radio, just catching up on his studies, just trying to be the best student he can be, and the music is interrupted by a news flash that is a welfare office is being robbed. Oh my God. And he's like, holy shit, a welfare office? That's like the worst crime you could possibly commit. I got it. wait, wait, wait. I'm not Spider-Man, fuck him. And actually, after those criminals left, they ran into an orphanage. And they set it on fire. Yeah. Yeah, no, he- After locking all the orphans in their rooms. He literally, he starts taking off his clothes and he's like, oh But they wait. promised them Christmas presents first. Yeah. Yeah, that way they get really disappointed before they And they die. also show them a bag of puppies and then they like- Drown it in, in the yeah. river. So. Yeah. Spider-Man rips off his clothes and he's like, oh wait, I'm not Spider-Man anymore. I'm gonna wait until I read it in tomorrow's paper, ha ha ha. So he does and it's it's horrible. <laughs> like, oh God. Harry's like, oh God. Like, literally Harry's like, holy shit, did you read this? He's like, I only read the sports pages because I'm a jock now or whatever. And he's like, it's real bad. Like It's like we're being invaded <laughs> by crime. So he's on his moped and he's driving by and he notices that like there is a shakedown going on on a rooftop and he just instinctively just springs into action. But he's not, he's got, he's just wearing his clothes. Yes, and so he scales up the building. He has to take his shoes off to do this. Yeah. <laughs> he always does that. So I just he, find that really funny, like seeing it without the costume. I know, it's a fun image. So Peter springs into action, he beats the shit out of these two guys, <laughs> and he saves this old security guard, and the security guard's like, and, and Spider-Man's like, I gotta like hide my face and be in shadow and not talk, and uh, it's really complicated. I gotta oh, get Peter, out Peter, is that you? <laughs> the, the old man is just like, you should stay. I'm sure there's gonna be a reward. Ah, oh, well, I'm sure you have your reasons for running away from me. And he just like goes to a convenient pier and just like goes, what is my problem? Like, why did I do that? What is, what? I, I quit being Spider-Man. I, like, I took a pledge never to be Spider-Man. Why did that, that guy bother me so much? Oh my God, it's because he's an old white haired man. He reminded me of Uncle Ben. 
I can only save geriatric old men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's All right. It. That's my rule. No, he's just, he remembers Uncle Ben, and then we do a convenient- Save my baby! Nope. Sorry. How old are they? Wait until that baby is 70 years older. So he just has two pages of a flashback of how he got his powers, and how he, great power, great responsibility, saved Uncle Ben. And uh, meanwhile, Kingpin and Foswell are having like an argument, because Foswell shows up, the, the big man, and he's like, hey, Kingpin, listen, uh, I'm the big man, I want my money, I'm gonna take over some of your shit, listen. I am the big man, which means that I am more, big, bigger and better than the Kingpin. So that means I'm gonna take over. You can be one of my lieutenants, like you were for me. And Kingpin's like, fucking what? <laughs> I got like laser canes and proceeds to zap him with a laser cane. And he jumps out of the way. And uh, so there's like a full scale crime war going on. And Peter's like, fuck it, I'm Spider-Man again. I, there's no there's no escape from this life. So he sneaks into Jameson's office, steals the costume. There's no escape from Spider-Man! <laughs> <laughs> and then he sits in Jameson's chair and waits for Jameson to come back there, into his there office. There is a crime wave happening, and Spider-Man's like, hold on. Yes. This, this is too good. Well, yeah, this is actually pretty genius, because Jameson comes in and he's like, no! And he's like, hey, thanks for hanging on my costume, you friggin' idiot. I just want to let you know, I was out recruiting. And he's like, recruiting? What do you mean? He's like, yeah, that's right. I was getting all kinds of Spider-Man, and I was enlisting a whole army of Spider-Man to take over the city. And he's like, what? what? <laughs> he's like, oh, I guess you have to print a whole bunch of attractions about how I'm back. Bye! And James is like, no! And Spider-Man's back. Oh, and you'll want to pay that uh, handsome photographer probably quadruple for getting pictures of me now. Oh, that happens. Yeah, Peter shows up and he's like, hey, and he's like, fuck you, you ingrate, you quit. And he's like, I got pictures of Spider-Man. And he's like, oh, damn it! <laughs> so everything's back to where it was. All right. I mean, but there also is like two more issues of the gang war that Spider-Man inadvertently caused by just having a tantrum in an well, alley I mean, one time. Well, I mean, really, Jameson caused it. Really, really, it is Jameson. And Jameson okay, gets his justice. The crime bosses caused it. I mean, yes. Because they're like, oh, Spider-Man's dead? We don't have to worry about any of it then. That's true. As you mentioned, there's still a lot of superheroes in the city. Yeah, no, yeah. it's actually the failure of the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Daredevil. Yeah. The X-Men. The cops. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. The cops were never going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But that's, uh, that's, that's Spider-Man no more. He's no more for like, I don't know, eight or nine pages. But it's still pretty fun. I, I like the... Like the the implication that he quit and just how desperately Marvel come. I mean, I mean, I mean New York needs him. <laughs> They're fun, and you get to see like the transitions. You know, maybe what you're looking for is in the past, or maybe these older stories will give you the context you need to go. You know, actually, maybe this isn't so bad. <laughs> right, right. You know, maybe like, I should appreciate what I have. Right, because I can imagine a lot of people are like they they idealize Peter Parker and they idealize Spider Man. Like Spider Man is like a bastion of integrity and a good man. And it's like, if you read any of this shit by Stan Lee, it's like, no. But like, he's more realistic, I think, where he's trying to do good, but he is selfish mm. and yeah. egocentric. And makes mistakes. Right. And the guy you know, maybe from like the 2000s or the 90s, he had to go through a lot of shit to get to that point. Right. And yet he still looks great. Thanks to that genetically irradiated spider. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys in another episode of Back Issues. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long, everybody, and keep reading. Wait, I was gonna thread. Oh, you